the value of being the last one giving up chapter 8 for a bhikkhu who sets forth effort to be victorious with the resolve to realize nibbana in this very life itself moral duties or rights are similar to a celestial magical wishing tree moral duties or rights are recognized not as building huts developing drains constructing more buildings growing flower gardens etc with the notion that this hermitage is mine or i belong to this hermitage if a bhikkhu honors the rules of conduct all such things will be fulfilled and provided by the lay people if it does not happen the bhikkhu should be contented with whatever is received and if things are neglected by those meritorious lay people considering that too as an object of contemplation as the nature of the world he must pursue to be freed from the world for a bhikkhu the utmost level of subsistence to be at ease is the bowl the three robes and a hut this minimum resonates the limit of the path to nibbana the limit of the path to being bhava ignorance is much more wider there are many phases of moral duties or rites that need to be performed by oneself in a hermitage sweeping the premise cleaning the huts activities of the alms hall attending to those bhikkhus who are sick activities relating to the offerings in the shrine attending to the elderly and visiting bhikkhus are many duties that inevitably must be done by a bhikkhu for the existence and the cleanliness of the hermitage as well as for the eradication of the defilements such as one's own conceit moral duties or rites are abundantly helpful those elated by conceit egotism and pride cannot gain results through meditation instead of harnessing the correct instructions given by a noble friend or a teacher who has attained the path they would try to go above such instructions and think of themselves becoming the teacher they wouldn't like to listen to others walking towards a path to enlightenment nibbana we should be skillful to learn from anything high or low rich or poor big or small the one who is conceited cannot do this achieve this the medicine for all this is the moral duties or rights when you clean the toilet you should not think that what you're cleaning is the toilet you should think that what you're cleaning is your mind when you sweep the compound you should not think that you're sweeping the compound but you should think that you're sweeping the dirt off your mind this is the manner in which you should clean your mind towards the journey to nibbana the nature of the mara ignorance is to induce you to give yourself good marks and a good name you should give credit or good marks not to mara but to your path to nibbana your thinking should be that it is for your own welfare that no one has cleaned the toilet or the compound you should make maximum use of that opportunity when you ignore such moral duties or rights you should understand that your mind gets filled up with defiled dirt and filth on a daily basis the mind which is filled with dirt is a perfect nursery for mara at the hermitage at all times you should not hesitate to be the bhikkhu who cleans spittoons the most The bhikkhu who is getting discipline in the path to nibbana should be at the utmost humility at all times. If someone were to wash his hands over your head, thinking that it is his nature, you must remain within your nature without conflict. You should stay behind all others, and even if you knew a thousand things, you should behave in front of others as if you knew nothing. Without being a mute, you should be a person who answers when asked a question. In this manner, you should not hesitate to proceed staying behind others. 
The one who stays behind can always learn something by observing those in front. The diversity in merit and demerit, virtuous and the non-virtuous, nature of behavior, nature of movement of all those who walk in front can only be observed by the one who proceeds behind others. You should discard their good and their bad. You should see that in everyone there is only the diversity of the four great elements. Make maximum use of the opportunity arisen of being the last. You being the last, thus having the opportunity to see all those ahead, and those ahead of you being unable to see you, must be considered as a fortune you have received. When in these worldly elements a human being's most supreme journey is innocently undertaken by you, the elderly bhikkhus will inquire thus, Though you are robed as a monk, you seem to have no knowledge. Are you contemplating to disrobe? In such a situation, pretend that you have no knowledge. If you go to indicate that you know, then what grows is only conceit. So is the work of Mara. Do not be disturbed. With humility, listen to what those elderly bhikkhus say to you. All these activities do not belong to you, hence let go of them. The things that belong to others do not make them yours. This process of letting go must only be known by you. If a second person gets to know, then that is the functioning of Mara. Nibbana is a journey which you must walk alone. This must be kept in mind. In the final lap, you relinquish yourself and that moment is the end of being, Bhava, the journey that comes to the end of Bhava. Without hesitating, you should know that the one who provides the fare for the journey to this victory is none other than the moral duties and rights. The path's fare is the humbleness, the humility, the utmost level of humility is the ceasing of conceit. It must not be forgotten that the spittoon which collects the beetle leaf spit, the toilet which collects the urine stains, the dining hall which collects cobwebs, all such things consist of factors necessary for the purpose of Nibbana. It is only when you arrive at the peak of humility that you can experience the ceasing of conceit.